This month on Inside the Lightning, known primarily as an enforcer, Andre Waugh has also shown he can do more than just drop the gloves. Over the next half hour, we'll talk at length with number 36 about the struggles he's faced while trying to find a place in the NHL, controlling his passion and intensity on the ice, and life away from the game. We'll also hear from some of the people that know Andre best. Shortly after he was born in Port Chester, New York in 1975, Andre's family moved to suburban Montreal. When we came in, in the, the neighborhood, we were English. We were from New York, the three of us, and it was only French speaking over there. So we were like the outsiders, and you know. Uh, we had to uh, rally together, the three of us, and it was always the trigger of us against, you know, the kids in the... But when uh, we got older, we got to speak French better, and we got, uh, made a lot of friends. And uh, anyways, we were pretty strong, the three of us, so they, we got respect pretty fast. <laughs> you grew up in Quebec. What, born in New York, moved young, at a very yeah. young age to Quebec. What was your childhood like? Uh, well, when I, I was born in New York, from so uh, I was eight months, I moved to Montreal, so I didn't had no notice of me bo being born there. But I, I think growing in my neighborhood, I mean, there was a lot of, I spoke a little bit of English because my two older brothers spoke a little bit there. My, my oldest brother is like four years apart with me. So he spoke English, so I would hear the English. So being in the neighborhood where it's only French, we'd speak English and that, and we'd have a rough time, you know, starting right there. We, we'd get in the fights again, the little, French kids, and uh, then uh, we made a name for ourselves. And uh, we <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, it, it was good though because it it just it was a, a time where where um, growing up there, all the children were about all the same age. So we did play a lot of hockey and baseball, soccer, and just hang out at uh, all the the my neighborhood with the kids uh, around the neighborhood. So it was great. You know? What was school like for you? Were difficult. Cool. Easy. Was it in English? French primarily? Yeah, it was all French, pretty much all French. Uh, I handled myself pretty good, you know, I was good, but uh, I mean, uh, I always loved sports and being outside, so being in a, cl in a classroom, I uh, sometimes, you know, I just didn't want to be there. And uh, But uh, I did enjoy school, you know, growing up, and uh, except going, it's, when you get a little bit older, you know, it's... Uh, uh, more homework and that, that's the less uh, fun part, but uh, I just like when uh, we had days off and when I was kicked out of the class, that was great too because it gave me spare time and <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, I uh, think you see a pattern developing in school, here. In school, just kidding. No, but no, it was good, you know, everything was all good. Just had a good time growing up with, uh, made a lot of friends. Playing with the guys, uh, all 18-year-old guys, and we had this young kid coming along, 14 years old, and he would uh, push around the older guys and uh, make them uh, mad, and his play was pretty good also. Uh, I, I understood right away that he was NHL material. I was wrong about a lot of things in my life, but that's one of them I just nailed on. I knew it, and deep down in my heart, I knew he was NHL material, yeah. Two brothers, right? Mark yeah. is one, four years older. Yeah. It used to play hockey with him. Yeah. With the older kids, though, he said you were always tagging along, yeah. trying to play hockey with the older kids, but it wasn't yeah. too long before you not only could compete, yeah. but could dominate those yeah, kids. Yeah, actually, yeah. I, like, I loved the, the sport hockey. Growing up, that was my, my game, you know, and uh, no matter what my brother would call his friends or older guys older than my brother would just go out, play street hockey, and I'd come with my stick and, hey, I want to play, you know, and I'd just get in there, get pushed around and that, but I, I, I never quit because I just loved it, and then I, I kind of, you know, with a lot of practice, I, I improved. <laughs> I, I became a little better, and I... I I was loving it, you know, and I did, uh, at one point I would go through to older guys, you know, guys that were older and just, you know, plenty, i dominate a little bit and started getting better and that guys would get like mad, they try to slash you and that, you know, but uh, it was all good, you know, it, it definitely helped me to play with older uh, people, younger. In Quebec, hockey is very big, so everybody, uh, big hockey fans. 
and uh, we, we, we had a nice uh, ice rink next to our house, maybe five, two, two minutes by foot. So we were always playing hockey, especially Andre. He, he used to play, he got home from school and he would play up to nine, 10 o'clock at night. And uh, he, you know, you, you could see early on that he had a knack for it. He, he loved the sport and he always played and always stayed in it. When you were growing up, what made you take hockey to another level. You weren't a Vinnie Le Cavalier or a superbly gifted. Oh, yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I but take it, exception to that. No, but it's funny that you say that because I, I played against Marty St. Louis growing up. Uh, Adam P. We banned him at, at a really young age. And if you go ask Marty, I, I was a pretty dominant player when I was younger. I, I'd score all the goals for my team and that I had. My shot was almost as hard as today, so I just take slappers from everywhere <laughs> and score goals. So, and, and Marty still talked to me about it, and we have we, we laugh about it. But uh, it's just until I hit juniors, I guess that's where I started getting more physical because I was taller and that. You know, I kind of changed my style, but I I always scored a lot of goals and uh, and joined do that. Junior hockey is different than yeah, perhaps the educational bit. system here. How hard is that on kids to go away? When did you leave? Uh, 14, 15? 17, 17. How tough is that? Yeah, it is tough, you know, because you, you grow up you're with your family and friends and then uh, just all of a sudden you move out. I, the first junior team I was with, I was uh, three hours away from home, so I didn't get to see my family and friends as much. So I think the beginning is kind of hard, and plus you get, they put you in a billet, you know, you stay with a different family, you get to to just meet, you're with a different family, so it's, it's everything's new and kind of hard to get adapt to, but uh, that's just part of, uh, of the making your way through up the ladder, you know. I said if I want to have a shot to play in the NHL one day, this is the road I have to take, so, you know, I try to see it on the positive way, so. The NHL comes in the sixth round. You're what, 17, 18 years old, and the Boston Bruins yeah. draft you. Yeah. Was there a naivete to you, or did you believe you'd be a Boston Bruin forever yeah. and wear the B on your chest? Uh, well, when you're young, you know, I was, I was junior, so uh, I got drafted. I was really excited at first, you know. I said, uh, I just want to... Uh, finish my junior years in a, in a good way and sign with Boston, which I did. And uh, going to Boston, you know, I, I said I, I might have a good opportunity. And I did see myself making the team because I, I had a dream and I kept uh, the dream in mind. And uh, But, uh, you know, I, I had a lot to, to learn at that age, 20, 21. And I was only 20 years old when I first uh, played pro, you know, that's uh, uh, nine years ago. Eight, nine years, but uh, I did believe I, I could play for Boston one day. And I, I had a couple games up with the team, but uh, I was still young. I had a lot to uh, learn, you know. What did you learn when they released you and you went to Fort Wayne yeah. and skated in the IHL, in the I? Yeah. What did you learn about yourself that you, you needed to be tougher, you needed to be more intense, you needed to be more professional? What, what happens? Well, yeah, I, w I was... Uh, uh, I think coming out, when Boston released me, I think uh, I did all the things. I, I fought a lot and played the game. And uh, I think it's more, uh, had to be professional and more disciplined with myself and uh, had to learn to be uh, more consistent, I think. You, you're young, you, you're with other guys, you have fun and uh, you go out and that, you know, you, you think it's kind of party because when you're up there, you see all the, the big rinks and you're with the big boys and that, you, it's all cool, you know? And I was really young mentally, so I think at that age. So and when Boston released me, it was kind of a oh, whole I mean, uh, If I want to make it uh, my way up, I think I I have to uh, to pick it up pretty soon, you know? I was 23, I said, this is uh, probably, going down in the IHL, I said, this is where I have to impress and make, make myself notice. And I think uh, after Christmas, I had a lot of teams watching me again. My agent had talked with some teams and it, it kind of gave me a boost, a motivation that, hey, uh, it's not over. Maybe, you know, I'll get another chance somewhere else, and which I did. So 
was kind of I was kind of lucky to get another opportunity, but I did jump on my chance when uh, Ottawa decided to sign me, and I said, you know, I'm gonna make this the best out of it. So, and I think I did. So I was kind of fortunate to uh, get that opportunity to uh, make it. So. Let me ask you this: in the room. Among the yeah. players and among the stars, yeah. a guy who fulfills your role is incredibly popular. You yeah. perhaps are giving more to that room than anybody else. Yeah. So when it becomes a business and they trade you to Tampa, yeah. visibly, you're an angry man. And it seems to show in what happens after you get here. Did you resent the fact that they moved you here to Tampa? Yeah. Was it hard on you? It was a little bit hard because, uh, I mean, I had a lot of friends, obviously, and the, the good thing, I was uh, near my hometown. A lot of my family, friends, I get to see them a lot, but uh, I know it's a business, you know. Uh, you'll be moved around a lot in this business, and uh, just being moved, it was more of a shock because they, they keep mentioning we're close to the playoffs, and they keep mentioning uh, how I'm going to be a big key factor. Player Here? In Tampa? In Ottawa. In Ottawa. Know, they're like, uh, this is going to be a big player for our team and that. So, and then the next day, boom, you're traded to Tampa. So I was kind of shocked and surprised at the same time, you know. I never seen Andre like an average player. Every time is a, a bit better than other hockey player, but the only problem was is sometimes uh, he loses his mind and is too, uh, to play too hard. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, that's the only problem we can see when we asking uh, Andres going to NHL. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> you, you, for sure you have a natural uh, talent for this. You come here and there's a string of incidents. You get to the end of the season yeah. and you end up getting suspended yeah. for 13 games. Yeah. Is there a correlation? To any of this, any of the carryover yeah. from what happens? Well, I, I think, you know, at that point I was a little bit upset, like I said, and uh, I might have had, um, I don't know, I, I was just maybe a little bit of angerness inside of me, you know, deep inside, and uh, I just uh, it wasn't, like after that, I realized it wasn't the smartest thing, but I. I, I've said a lot. I'm, I'm just a reaction guy, you know. I, I react right away, and I, I is like there, to Is there resolve. a governor on this? Do you have, at times, do you have trouble controlling that governor? Can you get too angry at times, or no, can you skate I, and plan or control? Yeah, I can plan or control. I don't think I have a problem with it. It's just uh, I, I, I'm so proud when I go out there. I want to leave the best impression, and. And I, I get fired up for games because with, with the role you have, you know, you have to be ready. You never know when you'll get in a fight or something. And you have to be fired up because you'll come and fight, fight a guy and you're just kind of just cruising out there and you get popped. You're like, whoa. So I try to get ready, you know, every game I try to be ready and fired up. And sometimes something will happen and you're, you're kind of... <laughs> You know, just uh, I react quick. So a lot of time I don't think. I just react instead of thinking first what what can happen if I do this. You know, and uh, you know obviously I regret it. I gr regret every what happened. But uh, you know that's just part of learning the learning process. And uh, I've put it behind me. And I, I know I can play under control. You know, just uh, I'm a very emotional guy, and uh, sometimes I let it uh, show too much. You know. Well, at the end of the year last year, they left you at home and they went into Washington. Yeah. All right. And yet, when all is said and done and they've won that series, they sign you to a new new deal. Yeah. What is the statement made in there? And was there any doubt in your mind that you'd be back? Yeah, I was. I was confident being back. You know, I got an opportunity uh, to play against New Jersey after that series with Washington. We won that, and I think I, I responded pretty well. John told me. We had a talk at the end, and he, he taught that also. So that was good just to, to hear that from him. And uh, uh, going uh, in uh, my meetings at the end of the year, I think that that's what they wanted to do, resign me. And it, it, it proves, you know, that they, they believe in me. And uh, it's great to, to get a two-year contract like that from the team. You know, it just shows that they, they're behind me no matter what. You know, that was just a, an incident, and uh, I have to put it behind me. And, um, for me, it's huge, you know, just to come and, and get that two-year deal. Uh, I want to respond by giving them the best hockey I can bring and help out the team the best I can. 
especially during the tough times. Andre has always counted on the support and loyalty of family and friends. In the morning, I come to the job and I take the newspaper, as, as, and I said, uh, and I see uh, Andre suspend for 13 game. For, oh no! <laughs> so I take the telephone and and I don't, don't want to say to him, uh, "Don't do that." So we have to talk and uh, try to make him uh, to laughing and change it, change his mind, uh, change. Uh, his ID, so uh, I think uh, that's the good relation between the three three guys, Max, uh, Andrew, and me. Uh, it's uh, changed the ID, and so make laughing. Uh, the life don't stop there. Well, we always try to back him up. We call him when uh, sometimes you see on the news that uh, Andre was suspended three games. You know, right away take the phone, you call. Uh, are you okay? What happened? You know, uh, is everything gonna be okay? And uh, you support him as uh, as best you can. You were working out this summer, yeah. Um, and when you were talking among your peers, you had, you had quite a lineup in there just in the gym. Who, Jean Sebastian yeah. Jaguer, yeah. Quebec, yeah. Um, George Larocque, uh, uh, Manny Fernandez, another goalie, um, Steve Bidgen, Buffalo. Yeah, there's a bunch of guys. Patrice Brisebois also uh, with Montreal. We're, we're just a bunch. Uh, uh, the guys from the area there, they work out with this guy that uh, he used to work for Montreal, so he knows a little bit more what hockey players need. So a lot of guys pick this guy to work out with. So uh, it's just fun also. We're all together and uh, we have a good time, you know. We joke around, but we're, we're serious in our workout. So it, it makes it fun, you know, to be around all the hockey players, you know. So. There's a transformation. On the ice, he's one kind of a guy, an enforcer, a mean guy. But off, guy, off the ice, you get to know him. Uh, I think he's a joker. He loves life. He loves animals. He loves children. He's a guy that uh, always needs to laugh, make people laugh. Of course, he's strong, you know, but uh, he's, uh, he's very uh, docile. You know, he's, uh, he likes to, uh, to have fun. He's uh, very, uh, like a, a bit of a clown. <laughs> he likes to make people laugh. and. Uh, takes everything pretty lightly, you know, not too serious and uh, it's good to be like that in life because, you know, that way you, you keep things, your spirits high and uh, it's, it's a nice quality. Who taught you to sing? The Everybody singer. says Andre Watt loves to sing. Yeah. <laughs> I always sing yeah, growing up, I don't know, I, I just love singing the music, I love music and uh, I play guitar, it's been four years now, about four or five years and uh, I, I just like to sing, you know, sometimes, you know, you just say, I, like I said, I've been a jokester, so I, I sometimes I fool around singing and just take it too far to an, another level. I love Tampa, the lovely sun. It's nice and sunny down in Tampa Bay. I love it. I want to play till I'm 40. Two of your closest friends remain two boyhood chums, guys you grew up yeah. with, Max yeah. and Sebastian. Yeah. To this day, your, your peewee friends are still your yeah. closest buddies here. Yeah, we, uh, we've played hockey. We went to school together and uh, did a lot of sport. We're just kind of... You know, we just had so much fun together. We always laugh, joke. Sebastian, Max, they're two jokesters, and I am one. So when we're hang, hanging out together, we always have a good time laughing no matter what. And uh, I think that's what kept us together all these years. And, uh, you know, we just uh, have a good time whenever we, we go out or go for dinner whatsoever. And uh, I think uh, we just uh, get along pretty well. And we never ever argued ever. In the, the, the years I've been uh, hanging out with these guys, so it's just great, you know. It's a good relationship we have uh, between friends. So. Is there loyalty here? Does it mean a lot to you that they knew you before any of this fame yeah. came along? Yeah, I think so. It's important, you know, because uh, you got a lot of people you, either you go to school with and uh, they know you're in the NHL. Hey, remember me? I was your good friend, you know. <laughs> so Seb, Max, it's nothing like that. I know that, you know, we've always been good friends and no matter what, now 
even if I made it a national hockey leader, you know, uh, I treat them the same and they treat me the same. We, they don't see me any different than, than when we were younger. So that's what makes it a, a good friendship, I think. When you go home, has money, fame, playing in the NHL changed you? Are you, are you still the same guy with no. two brothers from yeah. Quebec and oh, yeah. and it's here comes Andre? No, I, I'm not the same guy. I always try to, I've always been a, a clown a little bit, jokester. I like to have fun and uh, I think I, I've stayed the same personality and uh, my friends are as important, my family also and I take care of them also. You know, I, I like sometimes I'll bring out my friends and uh, buy them dinner, just go out, have a good time and uh, you know, uh, financially also, I, I, my family, you know, uh, they all have normal jobs, they, they work hard, but it's sometimes, uh, you know, for me, it, I know my parents supported me my, my whole life, and my, my brother is also there as important, and I think it's always good if I can help him, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'll be more than happy. But I, I just try to stay myself, and uh, I still have fun, and we, we bring back a lot of memories when we're, Young growing up, me and my brothers or my friends and that, so just to try to be myself and I don't think I've changed, you know, a lot of people tell me you're the same, I, I like you, like uh, the way you are, that's one thing that they, I have a lot of people just, they, they come up to me and say that's one good thing about you, you know, you, you stay yourself, a lot of guys are a little bit different, but I, I don't want to go in that path either, I just want to be myself and be remembered like that, you know, just a, a nice guy, normal guy, and uh, I'm not that uh, crazy, even though if I'm suspended all the time, but uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's about it. I think um, his game uh, is uh, pretty strong because he has every asset. He could score goals, he could fight, he could, uh, he could do anything. He could grind on the boards. Uh, I think that kind of player, every team needs one and uh, is often uh, a secret weapon, if I could say so. When I go see a, a game at the, the rink, you know, and uh, I look at him play and I, I get anxious, you know, when he gets near uh, on a fight or a goal or he hits somebody hard in the, 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 the boards, I'm always, uh, you know, it, it touches me, <laughs> like Celine Dion. <laughs> <laughs>